Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You know, the President's Precision Medicine Initiative could be a big step forward for more targeted, more effective therapies for any number of conditions. And I think it's a great idea. Uh, we should have started years ago. Dr. Collins, you first advocated for a national genetic study to examine how people's genes and environments contribute to diseases over a decade ago, 2004. Is that right? In fact, uh, that is exactly right. And uh, it landed with a thud at that point. That's actually the article up there on the <laughs> screen that I published in 2004. And I, I, in retrospect, this was probably a bit ahead of its time because we didn't have the technology at the point where this would have been affordable or practical, but it is now. So. Well, I'm, I'm glad to hear that it is now, although if we had started pushing and funding back then, we can only wonder how much further we would be ahead right now. You know, Congress didn't make those investments, and in fact, over the past decade, NIH funding hasn't even kept pace with inflation, and that means we are years behind in doing this work. If we are serious about speeding up biomedical innovation, about improving health, about reducing long-term costs, we start by investing in NIH. Now, the House has a proposal called 21st Century Cures that's supposed to accelerate biomedical innovation. And when it was first released by the Republicans a few months ago, it didn't include a single dime of new NIH funding for Congress. But last week's new bipartisan draft of this bill very much seems to be moving in the right direction. It has $2 billion in new mandatory funding for the NIH every year for five years. And I applaud the House Republicans for acknowledging what so many of us, including Newt Gingrich and the drug industry, have been saying for years. NIH funding is critical to accelerating cures. But let's be clear, a few billion dollars in temporary funding will not solve a decade of neglect, much less build the future that we need. So, Dr. Collins, in the late 1990s, Congress doubled the budget of NIH, and then agency funding was left to shrink back down. If Congress had never doubled the budget of NIH and had simply kept pace with prior investments, where would the NIH budget be today? Well, Senator, I keep a graph in front of me all the time about this very question, and I'll just put it up on the screen because uh, this is a documentation of the problems that we are now facing. Yeah. What, what you're seeing on that screen there, the yellow line is basically what NIH has had as far as our purchasing power for research, so it's the appropriation, but as adjusted by the effects of inflation. The dotted green line is the trajectory that NIH was on going back to 1970 yep. mm -hmm. uh, until 1998 when we had that wonderful doubling, but then we've been getting undoubled ever since. If you followed the dotted green line and we had stayed on that smoother trajectory, we would be substantially higher up in the neighborhood of a little over $40 billion. So just to get back on track. And to reverse the damage of the last decade, NIH, if I'm reading this right, would need more than $12 billion in just the first year. And the House proposal doesn't even put that much in over the space of five years. So let me just ask, based on what you've got here, in your expert judgment, what's the annual rate of increase that NIH needs to get back on track on its funding? Well, first let me say we were thrilled also to see what's in the 21st century cures, the $2 billion a year of mandatory, gave a great jolt of excitement and some relief to a community that's been really quite stressed over the past 12 years as we've been losing ground. But to get back on a stable trajectory that would result in a healthy biomedical research ecosystem, which our country has depended on with great success over 50 years, I would estimate, in my professional judgment, we need to be in the space of inflation plus 4 or 5 percent per year. That's pretty much that dotted line was inflation plus 3.7 percent, I guess. That was a healthy way uh, to be sure that all the talent and capabilities of this country in terms of biomedical research, where we have led the world for decades, could be sustained, encouraged, and innovation could go forth in all the ways that I think we want it to. Well, thank you, Dr. Collins. Look, $2 billion a year for five years is certainly better than nothing, but let's not pretend 
that a small temporary investment that falls billions of dollars short of what we're going to need to do the job. There is a gaping hole in our NIH budget and we need a serious plan to fix it. There are many ways to make that happen. I have a Medical Innovation Act, for example, that could add another $6 billion a year, wouldn't cost taxpayers a dime. But whatever we do, this committee has to get serious about medical innovation, and that means we have to do better than the House proposal on this. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.